Hey everyone, today I'm going to be doing a video talking to you about how I have my light set up on this 300 blackout upper that I have. If you haven't seen it, I do have a build series for this 300 blackout upper where I talk about all the different things that I have on here. You see how they're installed and a little bit about why I chose what I chose. Um, however, the thing that's gone through the most transformation since the initial building of this uh, has been the way my light has been set up. I knew this was where it would end up, but it took me a little bit of time before I was able to get all the components to do it. Um, I'm going to be breaking this up into two parts, one specifically about the light and then another specifically about the light mount that I'm using because this is not the factory mount that comes with this light. Um, but at the end of this video, um, I'll go ahead and put a link to the other video and then vice versa with that one. If, so if you found your way here that way, obviously you already know that. Um, so in this video, I'm going to be focusing on the Streamlight ProTac Rail 1, which is obviously the one attached here. There's a lot to like. Um, a lot of really really high value i think for what you're getting with this light uh, but let's go ahead and show you this up close and then we'll talk a little bit more about it okay so as you can see i have this attached to my midwest industries rail and the nice thing about this midwest industries rail is how small it is in diameter so i don't want to make this thing super bulky when it's designed to be nice and tight uh, so that's why i have it set up the way i do um, you can tell here just again going on about the light specifically because i'm probably going to get sidetracked but i'm going to do my best to avoid that um, it's not super super long i'll go ahead and put the exact like specs down here as far as length and all that um, but basically it has a very similar look and feel and operation to the uh, surefire scout lights so if you're familiar with the surefire scout this is not going to be a stranger to you everything is pretty much identical um, other than the price which is to me the most appealing aspect of this light but i'll talk about that more later so um, you it will either come well it actually comes with both a tail cap just a regular tail cap that you can manual oper manually operate or it also comes with this tape switch so you have both options available to you right off the bat uh, obviously you can tell that I ran the tape switch. Now the tape switch does come with the zip ties to attach it uh, more directly, which is excellent. Um, I have used my own zip ties because I went through a bunch of them trying to figure everything out. So these are my own zip ties, not the ones that came with it. However, they do come with them as well. Uh, the tape switch has a bunch of different operation methods. Uh, the way I have it set up is to do momentary only um, with just the main bar here. The rear button is a toggle to do constant on and then if you double tap the um uh, the, the big bar you get the strobe as you can see there on the brake now one of the reasons that i chose to go with the tape switch is again it gives me a lot more versatility no matter what hand i'm using i can access that tape switch and i'm using the strike uh, industries si link here and that gives me a really good uh, reference point to know where that tape switch is now I don't want to go super deep into the theory behind using a light uh, in, in these videos. However, mainly what I'm going to be using this light for is momentary only. So by having the uh, SI link where it is, it puts my thumb in a position to where it's very difficult for me to accidentally toggle that constant on. It's only going to be that momentary or that strobe, uh, which is how I want it set up personally. Obviously, if you are the other way around, you can swap the tape switch around, do whatever you want, uh, but that's how I have it set up and it works very well for me. One of the other things that I like is if let's say I'm doing daylight operations or I'm in a situation where I don't want any possibility of this light going off, you can just unscrew the, uh, the back here a little bit. And now, <laughs> I guess not enough. Uh, now it totally deactivates the light, which is excellent. So if, again, if you don't wanna be accidentally NDing your light or anything like that, you can just unscrew it, just screw it back in and it'll return back to full function. As far as the brightness of it, uh, they do have a longer version, which is obviously gonna be brighter. Um, however, for me, for the kind of ideas that I'm gonna be using a light for, I don't need something super crazy bright. For me, this one works perfectly well uh, for the, kind of working inside. And as I'll, you'll see when I demonstrate kind of going through the shoot house here, even just with these white walls, the uh, concept of self-blinding can be uh, pretty significant if you're not in a lit room like this, you're going into a dark room like the shoot house. Um, so that light bouncing off of there, if it's super bright, you're gonna start dealing with self-blinding. Not a huge deal here, but something to keep in mind. 
So before I move on, I also just want to briefly mention the mount that I'm using, because again, this is not the factory mount. This is an Arasaka inline mount. Uh, it directs attached to the M-Lock. And as you can tell, it sucks it down really close to that rail. Even up here, you can see that's about as close as you can get without it you know, negatively affecting anything else. And also I have it kicked back far enough to where <clears throat> I've shot with this light in this position, I don't know, many hundreds of rounds, and I haven't had any issues with it totally clouding up the lens. If you do cloud up the lens, um, obviously it's not a big deal if you're just you know shooting on a Sunday afternoon, but if you're actually using this to defend yourself, you want this light being as capable as possible. Now, one of the things that I like most about this light is the ability to use a couple different types of batteries. Um, as you know, CR123s are very prevalent among the tactical light world, and that these this does accept, I believe it's one uh, CR123 battery, and that's how you're gonna get the brightest uh, light out of it. However, the, to me, the coolest thing is that this will also take AA batteries, so if you, are in a shit hits the fan situation and you don't have access to CR123s, you're gonna be able to find double A's just about anywhere. Or even if you're taking a training class and your battery dies, you know, double A batteries are pretty ubiquitous. You're gonna find them anywhere and this will run off double A batteries. Now it won't be as bright, however, uh, it, it will run those double A's, which to me is excellent. I, I can't imagine a more <laughs> ideal situation as far as batteries go to be able to run two different batteries that are both prevalent in the firearms community. Uh, so that's really, really excellent. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take you inside the shoot house, which just FYI, I'm here at Spartan Training Concepts. Uh, we're doing a force on force class this weekend. <clears throat> so I'm kind of hijacked the shoot house now that the first day is over to uh, use for this video. Um, if you guys are interested in taking a force on force class, uh, I highly recommend Spartan Training Concepts over here on the West Coast. Uh, and again, kind of more applicable to the video I'm doing now, they are gonna be doing low light, no light classes as well. So very applicable. I highly encourage you to get training, but that quick plug out of the way, let's take you inside and show you how this light actually works in a dynamic environment. All right, so I'm, I have the light on right now, just so you can kind of see what I'm talking about before I start actually showing you. Um, but just some idea behind why I have the light set up the way I do on the right side is being a right-handed shooter, I'm gonna be predominantly shooting around the right side of cover. Obviously, you should, be able, you should be able to do both, but as a righty, that's probably where I'm gonna find myself the majority of the time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kick the light off and actually just based off the viewfinder, this does seem to be a pretty adequate uh, depiction of the light pattern that I'm seeing with my naked eye. Um, so hopefully that should give you a good idea of what kind of lighting you can expect with your light. So I'm gonna kick this off and I'm gonna show you kind of more organically what it could look like using this light uh, in a room like this. So the nice thing is because the way the light is super sucked up against my gun, I don't have to come around cover very much to be able to fully light my target. So basically, once I get to the point where my red dot is on the target, my light is covering that target as well. And by coming around to the right, I have a lot of ability to keep everything lit that I'm, that's coming into my field of view, which is ideally what I want. Now I'm gonna come around the other side, just so you can see me. I'm gonna come around the other side uh, using my left shoulder and you can kind of see some of the difference there. Uh, hopefully I don't blind the camera, but uh, we'll see. All right, so I had to move the camera uh, just so you could see this better. However, you're gonna see when I'm peeling off to the left, coming around a corner, pieing a corner, uh, obviously my gun's gonna have to kick out a little bit more or there's another technique that I'm gonna show you as well. So if I'm keeping the fire, I'm totally upright. At this point, my red dot's on the target. However, I am totally lighting the wall in front of myself, so I'm doing nothing to illuminate any potential targets in the other room. So what I can do is either kick further out and get more of myself as a potential target to uh, anyone that is in the other room, or I can just turn over a little bit, at which point it can be a little bit uncomfortable, but my light is more or less in line with my bore, and I have less of me sticking out. Uh, not necessarily ideal, hence why, again, as a righty, I'm probably going to try to come around the right side of cover as best I can, but obviously in a house like this, that's not always going to be an option. 
Um, but hopefully you can kind of get an idea just of the patterning in here of what the lighting is gonna look like. I'm even gonna move you back around just so you can see what the strobe is gonna look like as well. So from this point, I can kick my light on. You'll see what's kind of going on over here. And if I turn my strobe on, I don't know how well, well, it looks, uh, again, according to my viewfinder, it does seem to be a pretty accurate representation of what I'm seeing, but I can still come around and see everything just fine coming around the right side. All right, so hopefully you were able to get a pretty good idea of what you can expect from uh, the, at least as far as the output from this little light. Uh, in that other room, there were mirrors. Uh, the walls weren't totally white. There were some, uh, you know, kind of uh, plywoody type walls. So I'm not super worried about self-blinding in this shoot house. But again, having that mirror straight across from where I was coming around that corner, um, if I had a much brighter light, I'd probably dealing, be dealing with some pretty significant self-blinding, especially when I was coming around the left side of cover, since this was still behind the wall when my sights were not. Um, if I were to kick that off coming around the left side of cover, I'm gonna be blinding myself pretty significantly, which is obviously not something that I wanna do. But again, you can see that even coming around with my right hand being my support hand, I can still very easily activate that tape switch and do everything that I need to do which to me is a little bit better than just having that regular tail cap, but obviously there are applications for that as well. So hopefully that gave you a little bit more of an idea about this light. Again, I highly recommend it. Um, again, Surefire is something you can absolutely trust your life to. However, for a lot of us, myself included, I can't really afford to outfit all my guns with Surefire lights. Full-time student, I can't do that. Streamlight is giving you a very, very good option at a much more budget-friendly price that as far as I'm concerned, works just about as well. Does everything I need it to at a very uh, appealing price and a very uh, clean, nice package. You're getting a lot with it, both the regular tail cap and the tape switch. Uh, it's excellent. And because it sh uh, has the same footprint as Surefire Scout lights, there's a full aftermarket for it, uh, including the mount that I have. So if you wanna learn more about this Arasaka mount, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about it in another video, which I'll link uh, in the bottom and I'll have a click through after this video as well. Uh, I'm a really big fan of it. It's very, again, affordable, which is good when you're going with one of these also. It's been very sturdy for me, um, but again, I'll talk a little bit more about that in the next video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and throw those in the comment section below. Uh, if you wanna see more videos like this, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. And again, I highly encourage you, uh, especially if you're using lights or anything like that, get training. Spartan Training Concepts is one school here in the Northwest that I highly recommend. I've taken just about every single class they offer to the point where now they're having me help out with classes here, uh, which has been pretty fun, again, with Force on Force classes. I think I caught a uh, sim round, threw my mask into the lip today. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that. Um, but uh, excellent classes, especially if you need to learn how to use a light, uh, which again, I still need to learn as I'm sure a lot of you watching that video are probably cringing uh, pretty bad. So anyway, I hope you're able to get something out of this video and I appreciate you watching. So I'm gonna try to do my best to show you exactly how this thing mounts up. It's gonna be a little bit difficult because this room isn't super well lit. Just FYI, I'm in the uh, Spartan 